Today is not going to be one of my normal how-to videos. Instead, I want to talk about my concerns over the long-term viability of Home Assistant and whether it just might be headed for obscurity. Welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Now, before I start and you start firing up your comments, let me first say that I love Home Assistant. I've been a Home Assistant user for almost exactly four years now, starting out with version 0.82, I believe. And this is when the lovely dashboards were still in beta. There was no Home Assistant automation UI. So it's come a long way. And I've got great appreciation for the developers at Navacasa and the community for making Home Assistant what it is today. It hardly looks the same. So I'm not here to bash on Home Assistant. It's actually my love of Home Assistant that has me concerned. Today I want to talk about some of the strengths of Home Assistant and what's happening in the current smart home and automation market and maybe a weakness or two of Home Assistant as well and what this might lead to down the road. Now I'm sure what I'm about to say is going to generate a lot of comments and a lot of other opinions and that's fine. Leave your thoughts down in the comments. I would ask though that you watch this video all the way through because what I'm going to talk about does come with a lot of assumptions and a lot of caveats. And of course, please just keep your comments on topic and respectful of one another. Now, one of the major advantages of Home Assistant over its current mainstream rivals is that it allows you to bring hundreds if not thousands of different devices from different manufacturers under one umbrella. And in most cases, it allows you to control those locally on your own network without reliance on the internet or a vendor's cloud servers. As of the recording of this video, Home Assistant currently lists 2,242 different integrations available. Now, not all of those are local. Some of them do rely on a cloud service, but the majority of them are local. This means that they're your devices under your control. But if you follow the smart home market at all, you've probably heard of something called Matter. It just released its first official specification certification program, and Matter is an alliance of over 400 different companies. Pretty much anybody who has anything to do with smart home or smart home technology is involved here. It includes companies like Amazon, Apple, Google, Samsung, Tuya, Espressif, and yes, even our own Navacasa team from Home Assistant is involved in this alliance. The goal here is to come up with a common standard that allows devices from all these different manufacturers to communicate and communicate locally on your network without the need for a cloud and without the need for proprietary hubs or systems. So the idea is that much like Home Assistant today, you can pretty much buy any device from any manufacturer and have it work on your current platform, whether that platform happens to be Google or Amazon or SmartThings or Home Assistant. Now, standardizations and alliances like this have been attempted in the past and really haven't gone anywhere. Matter does seem to have some legs, but what we don't know is what it's really going to look like once it's rolled out and been around for a while. Will manufacturers allow basic communications with their devices, but still lock things like advanced features behind a cloud service or behind a subscription? We really don't know. But maybe in an ideal world, if we look one, two, or even five years down the road, we might actually have a system where all these devices will operate locally on our network, regardless of manufacturer, and we'll all talk and play nice together, regardless of what automation platform you're using. Does that sound familiar? Sure it does. Us Home Assistant users have been doing that exact same thing for years now. But there may come a time where you'll be able to do the same thing that you do with Home Assistant today pretty much with any platform that's out there. This brings me to another key feature of Home Assistant, and that is its robust automation engine. With Home Assistant automations, nearly anything can be a trigger. And I'm not talking about just your devices and whether those devices are off or on or opened or closed. I'm talking about things like numeric values. In addition, you can use events or things like the elevation of the sun above the horizon or an MQTT message or even Home Assistant automations themselves can be a trigger to run yet another automation. Adding to the list of triggers is a very robust set of conditions that you can apply to your automation. That means that if a door opens, you can also check a set of conditions. Is the light level a certain value? Is the sun up or down? Uh, and other things that you can apply and you can combine multiple conditions using ands and ors uh, to your automation as well. 
Finally, add on all the different available actions you can have for your automation, but you can string together multiple actions within a single automation, and those can get very complex as well. Home Assistant probably has the most robust and complete automation engine on the market, except for maybe Node-RED, and a lot of people use Node-RED in combination with Home Assistant. Now, for quite some time, Amazon has allowed you to use any device that's integrated as a trigger. And now it looks like Google is also going down that path. Any device that is integrated into your Google Home or your Amazon ecosystem can be used as a trigger. So let's take a quick look at how that works in Google with these new changes. When I go in to create a new automation or what they call routines, I have to select a starter, which is the same thing as a trigger in Home Assistant. But now I have this new option down here that when a device does something. So if I select that, I now see all my devices that are available to Google Home. And in my case, since I use Home Assistant to expose a lot of my devices to Google Home, I really have nearly all of my devices available through here. Well, let's just use my garage lights. So I select that. Well, my only really option is when the light turns on or turns off. That's my only action option with this particular device. I do have a few limited conditions that I can set. Nowhere near as, as the complexity of what I can do in Home Assistant, but I'll just leave that for any time and we'll add that for our trigger and our condition. Now when I go to add an action, Again, I only have available what Google makes available to me. I can adjust other devices based on this and a handful of other options. I do have this option for try adding your own, but really all that is is whatever spoken phrase you would normally be able to say to your home device. If you say, Google, do this or do that, and Google responds, you can use that as a custom action. Now, the only reason I had all those devices available to me in Google was because I used Home Assistant to expose those devices. But if Matter plays out, that means all those devices could likely be available in Google or Amazon to act as triggers without the need for Home Assistant. But you're still somewhat limited in terms of the triggers on those devices and the particular actions you can take based on a drop-down list that Amazon makes available. So it's still not as powerful as Home Assistant, but then I saw this. Now, this is courtesy of 9to5Google, but apparently Google is beta testing a script editor for Google Home. And if you look at that closely, you'll notice that, yep, that's YAML. So it's YAML with auto-completion options to be able to create your automations in Google Home. Now, there's no guarantee that this will ever come out of beta, and Google is infamous for coming out with products or starting with beta products and then just silently killing them, and they never see the light of day. But if this does come to light, and again, we don't know how powerful this script engine might be, and the fact that if matter plays out according to plan, then you once again have a situation where you have all of your entities available to be able to create complex automations, this time within Google Home instead of using Home Assistant. I can hear you already click clacking away in the comments talking about, yes, but Google is cloud-based and Google is going to harvest all of your data. And those of us that use Home Assistant use it because it's local and we keep all of our data here. I don't disagree with you, but to be honest, does the average consumer really care? Do they really even understand? Most of them already have Google or Amazon devices in their homes. And if they have smart devices, it's almost guaranteed all those devices are already cloud-based, which brings me to my last concern about Home Assistant. Let's be completely honest. The installation, setup, and more importantly, the ongoing maintenance of Home Assistant does take some level of technical skill, or at least the ability to do research, understand those technical terms, and apply them to your Home Assistant instance. Every month, Home Assistant comes out with a new release. Now, I'm thrilled at the rapid pace of development, but often these new releases come with a longer list of breaking changes than they do new features. And maybe because the release schedule is so rapid, it appears that there might not be time to fully beta test each new version because there are often anywhere from six to eight or even 10 point releases or patches that come out after each monthly release, sometimes as many as three, four, or five in the first week alone. And you dare not fall too far behind by skipping a number of new versions because let's say you go six months and then a new feature comes out in Home Assistant that you really want to use and you decide to do an upgrade. 
you now have six months of breaking changes in there as well. And if something does break, now you're trying to sort back through all the different release notes from all the different versions to figure out what might cause your automation or your device to break and how you might fix it. And while I don't always agree with his opinion on smart home technology, I know a number of you that watch my channel also watch Paul Hibbert, and I think he explained the idea about breaking changes in Home Assistant very well in this clip. I literally set up Home Assistant on my PC for the first time, created a dashboard using the things that it had discovered, and then pressed a button to update Home Assistant. Now I have this. You've got to be kidding me! I want update! One update to a brand new instance with barely anything done to it, and it's managed to break something! Now personally, I don't mind. I have the skills and the time available to take care of Home Assistant to apply those updates and deal with any breaking changes. But I don't think that's going to work with your average consumer. Can you imagine if Amazon or Google sent out monthly updates that require their users to look over release notes to determine if something in their house might break, and then to actually fix it if it does break? Is Uncle Jim or Aunt Edna or neighbor Bob or coworker Steve really going to spend an hour or two every month to maintain their home automation system? Or are they just going to be perfectly happy with asking Amazon to turn on a light or having Google make an announcement when their garage door opens? Now, Home Assistant has made significant strides in this area, not only the addition of the uh, UI automation editor, but they're continuously taking integrations that previously had to be configured manually in YAML and moving those into baseline integrations that are part of the core of Home Assistant. Now, while this means it's less likely you're going to have breaking changes, it does come with a trade-off. In my case, a lot of times the YAML integrations, I'm able to customize and configure to exactly my needs. When it goes into a baseline integration, which is not optional, by the way, when this happens, I can no longer keep my YAML integration. I'm dependent upon whatever the developers decide to make available and how they opt to make it available. I can no longer maintain my own integration. And therein, I believe, lies the rub for Home Assistant. Every time they bring something into a baseline integration or add a new point and click feature to try to make it easier for beginners, it always ends up being a one size fits all and they take yet another little piece away from the more advanced users who really want the ability to customize their system. And while it's been stated in the past by the developers that YAML is never going to go away, it does feel like each new release of Home Assistant takes another little piece of YAML away in favor of a generic integration or feature targeted towards those beginning users. They continue down this path, how long will it be before Home Assistant looks a lot like Google and Amazon in the fact that you can only customize it based on the features or options that the developers decide works for everyone? So all this begs the question of what should Home Assistant be or what should it be trying to become with all the current changes in the smart home market? If matter actually comes to pass, like we hope it does, all of your devices will be able to communicate locally with each other on your network. And if Google actually does release something like that advanced script editor, where does that leave Home Assistant? Should Home Assistant try to become a general consumer product and compete directly with Amazon and Google as a system that Uncle Bob and Aunt Betty can put in their home? Or should they refocus their efforts on kind of the core group of users that got them where they are today? Those of us with an emphasis on security, privacy, and local control that have the technical skills to maintain it, but also want the flexibility to be able to customize and use the system for our exact needs for our particular smart home. I don't want this to seem like I'm predicting the eventual doom of Home Assistant. I love Home Assistant and I really want to see it to continue to thrive and succeed. But with the current changes in the market, I think that Home Assistant is going to need to decide where it belongs in the market and put its efforts towards making it the best system that it possibly can for that market. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What do you think Home Assistant should be and what should be their target market for the future? And while I'm almost afraid to even ask on this particular video, if you found anything that you liked, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, which are normally about projects and using smart home technology and not opinion of pieces, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I release a new video, ding that little bell icon. As always, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.